Bueno, muy buenos días a las personas que se van conectando a esta sesión informativa de Colfuturo y a aquellas que están viviendo esta sesión tiempo después. Sean bienvenidos a esta charla informativa con la Universidad de Bath en Reino Unido. El día de hoy nos acompaña la representante de esta institución, quien nos va a brindar información de utilidad sobre la oferta académica, requisitos de admisión, proceso de postulación y también sobre el convenio que se tiene con Colfuturo. Así que la invitación para todos es que participen en esta sesión, conozcan toda esta información de utilidad y si al final ustedes tienen preguntas, dudas, pueden usar la cajita de Q&A y vamos a responder cada una de esas inquietudes. Y les voy a recordar cuál es ese convenio que se tiene con BAD y el descuento que van a poder recibir. Así que ese convenio dice que la persona va a obtener un descuento sobre el valor de la matrícula del 15% para admitidos en maestrías y del 25% para los, los admitidos en Master of Philosophy o para los doctorados. Entonces, ese es el beneficio que podrían recibir y la ruta para acceder a ello es que ustedes se postulen al programa Crédito Beca, cuya convocatoria abre el próximo año 2024, precisamente el 9 de enero y cerrará el 29 de febrero. Así que tienen ese plazo de tiempo para postularse al crédito beca con ese programa de internet de la Universidad de Bath y si nosotros lo seleccionamos desde Colfuturo, vamos a enviar su nombre directamente a la universidad para que ellos puedan otorgarles ya sea el 15% o el 25% del valor de su matrícula. Así que sin más introducción, lo voy a agradecer a la representante por estar el día de hoy y recuerden, cualquier duda o pregunta, pueden usar la cajita de Q&A. So, thank you so much for being here, and you can go ahead and start your presentation. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Navdeep Appel. Um, I'm the Head of International Student Recruitment um, in Student Recruitment and Admissions at the University of Bath. It's really great to be here today. Um, so as you can see, we are Sunday Times University of the Year 2023, and also we are a top 150 QS university, ranking at 148, 148 in the QS rankings. So today, what I wanted to speak to you about is the university, the city of Bath, our um, rankings and reputation. Um, I will talk about our postgraduate courses, some information about entry requirements, and then also about scholarship and funding opportunities for you. Um, and a little bit about student life, and then there'll be opportunity for question and answers at the end. So just to start off, um, taking a little quiz. So why students should choose the University of Bath? I'm just going to ask you a question. Um, you don't have to answer that, but um, let's just have a think about Where is Bath and how long does it take to travel from Bath to London by train? Well, first of all, Bath is in the southwest of the country, but in terms of traveling from the center of London um, to the university, we have four options. And I'm pleased to say that it's 80 minutes. It takes 80 minutes from the center of London by train um, to travel to Bath. So we are a UNESCO World Heritage City. Um, we are close to Bristol as well. That's the next largest city, 15 minutes by train. Bristol Airport is also close by and it's two hours to travel to London Heathrow. So we're in the southwest here of, of the country. Um, we're a UNESCO World Heritage City, the UK's only UNESCO World Heritage City. Um, and I just wanted to just share some images from the city so you get a sense of what the city looks like. Um, so these are some photos taken um, from the city. We have the Georgian architecture, um, the famous abbey in the city centre. Um, and we are, in fact, one of the safest university cities in the UK, um, as voted in the Times Higher Education. Moving away from the city itself, um, this is the campus. Um, so as you can see, we are a campus university. We are on the top of a huge hill um, and the city sits below. So that Georgian architecture that you saw um, sits below and everything that you need is actually on campus. You've got sports facilities, um, you've got the um, accommodation that's around the city, uh, around the campus, sorry. And then you've got teaching facilities at the center. 
a lot of our postgraduate students also choose um, to live in and around the city centre in university accommodation so that they can experience the city whilst they're at the university as well. So that's where we are, what we look like. So why Bath? So one of the things I wanted to share with you today is around our international connections. We are a very international university, um, both in terms of students at the university, our research, our connections in terms of employability and organisations we work with. One of the other key things for students coming to us is about us embedding employment skills into our courses. So we very much want to get all of our graduates work ready so that they can get go into um, employment. And we have we work directly with employers who want to um, they, they want to employ Bath graduates. We give you real world experience. Um, some of our courses have year long placements included. So you would study for a year, you would do a placement for a year and you would then complete a research project as well. Um, and, and that's where we kind of bring that real world experience to you. Um, and also, as I said, we make you work ready so that you are ready once you've completed your specialization course, that you're able to go into the workplace. So the university itself, we currently have around 20,000 students. Um, about two thirds of these are undergraduates and just over that uh, a third are, um, sorry, two, two, three quarters um, and then um, a quarter are post, um, postgraduate students. Um, so it varies in terms of international students. 32% um, of our students come from outside the UK. That's across all levels of study, undergraduate and postgraduate. Um, there's more than 153 nationalities represented across our student body. So stu we have students um, from all over the globe, from sort of India, Southeast Asia, um, from America, North America, South America, um, and in Europe as well. So we're quite a diverse, vibrant international um, community. Um, and in terms of your career, um, I talked about those international connections before. So um, we are we we are in a position to offer you global opportunities. We embed those employment skills into the academic programs. You could be doing a practice track. You could be working with a real life organization, um, presenting to them on, a, on a, 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 a real life problem that they have in a project type of way. Um, and employers want to recruit Bath graduates because, as I said, they're work ready. Um, and that's one of the key selling points for Bath that we pride ourselves on having work ready graduates. So um, in terms of our rankings, I mentioned about the QS ranking. The University of Bath is also a top 10 UK university. So we come in the top 10 of the, the UK national rankings. We are seventh in the Guardian. We are fifth in the Complete University Guide and eighth in the Times and Sunday Times. Um, so we're in a quite a unique position with only a small number of institutions been in the top 10 of all three national rankings. So as well as that, we are still University of the Year um, for the Times Sunday Times for 2023. Um, but we are also ranked um, in terms of top five for graduate prospects and by the QS employer reputation ranking, we are in the top, um, top 100 for those rankings as well. Um, and our research is 92% is classed as world leading of the research we do. So we're not only really getting you ready for the world of work, we are research led as well, which puts University of Bath in a very unique position in terms of the proposition that it can offer to you as a student. So away from our rankings and focusing on our programmes, um, we have one school of management and three faculties. So we have the Faculty of Engineering and Design, Faculty of 
humanities and social sciences and the faculty of science. So I'm just going to focus on the programmes that are available at postgraduate level within each of those areas. So starting with the Faculty of Engineering and Design, we have a number of departments in terms of their rankings. Again, they're very well ranked in terms of subjects. So they're first for architecture in the Times and Sunday Times, number three for civil engineering, 12th for electronic and electrical engineering and second in the Guardian University Good Guide for mechanical engineering. So you can see the broad range of courses in engineering are very highly ranked. In terms of the courses they offer in each of the departments, so architecture and civil engineering, we have a number of courses, including um, architectural engineering, civil engineering, conservation of historic buildings, mo modern building design, which also offers a placement with the course. So you go and work for part of the port course, civil engineering, and our new course for 2024 entry is MSc decarbonisation. So very much working on that sustainability agenda. In electro electrical and electronic engineering, we have robotics and autonomous systems. We have Chemical Engineering Department offers the MSc in Environmental Engineering. And then we have a suite of automotive engineering programs um, within the Department of Mechanical Engineering. So you can choose what you want to focus on. They are all automotive engineering programs, but you can focus on automotive technology. You may want to focus on electric propulsion um, or, or business management within those courses. So there's flexibility there if you're looking at that suite of programs. And then we have our engineering business management course. Um, and linked to those automotive engineering programs is um, we have a dedicated um, site um, organization, which has been newly created, the Institute of, of Advanced Automotive Propulsion Systems. So this is working directly with industry around those courses and you would be able to have that opportunity um, to be involved in, in terms of um, having access to this area which is really exciting so faculty of science um, so linked in that we have a number of departments Ooh, sorry let me just go back to that sorry about that so we've got programs focusing on biology and biochemistry, chemistry, computer science, which is very popular, mathematical sciences, and then pharmacy and pharmacology. So um, our popular courses, so yes, as I said, computer science is one of our popular courses. Um, and then that takes us to our suite of programs that we have in computer sciences. So we've got the MSc in computer science, we have a MSc in data science. And I was talking earlier around um, some of our courses offer a, a placement. So you work, you study for a year, you go and work for a year. So our MSc data science offers a long, a year long placement with your course. Uh, we have data science with statistics, which you could specialize in. And this also offers um, the placement. And then for 2025, some of you may be looking for 25 entry, we do have new courses coming. One is MSc Artificial Intelligence and MSc Machine Learning. We've also got a suite of courses in health, so a focus on health within the Faculty of Science. We've got MSc Biotechnology. We do have a suite of these programs, um, but this one focuses on healthcare technologies. Um, there are two research projects within this um, programme and you also sort of focus on the challenges that are faced in terms of global health care. Um, so it's, it's, it's very topical for the moment. And then we've got the data science with statistics and a focus on health. And this is about how we can use data science and the specialisation from that course to deal with the global challenges in healthcare and and. This also includes that 12 month placement. So you would be getting real life experience, real work experience as part of that course as well. So Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. Now, this is a, um, a large 
um, department, faculty, with a wide variety of courses. So they offer courses in economics, economics and finance. We have um, mm. health psychology. We've got courses in psychology, such as forensic psychology, um, psychology with economic behaviour. We've got courses in languages and politics, so MA relations, um, international policy, social policy as well. So a very broad range of subjects um, within the um, Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. So the School of Management, um, this is our final department. Um, they're in the top five for all of our subjects that feature within our key national rankings. So they're third in the Guardian, they're first, uh, they're th apologies, they're third for business and management, accounting and finance. Um, they're fourth for accounting and finance in the Times and Sunday Times, and then first for marketing in the complete university guide. So again, the business school is a top five university in a top 10 um, university. We offer a number of master's courses within the School of Management. So these include um, specializations such as accounting and finance, finance, you could specialize in banking. Um, we've also got business analytics. Um, we also have some sort of some more conversion courses, management. So if you've never studied management before, um, we do offer our MSc management if you've come from a different background. Um, we've got our international management, human resources, uh, entrepreneurship and management, operations and sustainability management. So a, a, a broad range of courses within the field of business and management. The majority of these courses are pre-experienced. So usually students have around up to five years of work experience. For anybody looking for um, a program where you've got more experience, um, you may not have, but these, these courses, so engineering business management, which is taught di um, jointly with the faculty of engineering, um, sports management, again, a joint program with uh, the faculty of humanities and social sciences, and strategic retailing. Students may have more experience, um, but also just as suitable for students who may be coming directly from their undergraduate studies. So staying on the um, School of Management programmes, our MBA, um, again, a top ranking programme. Um, we are in the top 20 in the UK and in the top 50 um, for the QS Global MBA rankings. Um, and it's, it, so it's in the top 50 of, of programmes globally. In terms of what that programme looks like, um, we have a fairly sort of smallish MBA programme. So on average, our programme has around 50 students each year. So for 2022 entry, we had 47 um, students on that course. 96% um, were international with 11 nationalities. And from that map, you can see that students are coming from across the globe. So we had people from Canada, North America, um, the UK, South Asia, Southeast Asia. Um, so Thailand, Taiwan, the Middle East, India um, and, and East Asia as well. So a really sort of even split and a, a nice cohort size. And we think that's really important to deliver the right MBA programme um, for, for, for our students as well, because the student experience is very important to us. So we've looked at the courses, but now to look at the entry requirements um, for those courses. So in terms of sort of just focusing on a standard um, course. Obviously, um, all of our entry requirements are published um, on our web pages, and we would recommend that you take a look at sort of the academic requirements, so what subjects they need you to have studied on that programme. Um, in terms of English language entry requirement, most of our courses, on average, it's around IELTS 6.5 to 7 or equivalent, so do check for each course, it does vary, but, but 
for the majority of courses, it's either 6.5 or 7 or overall for the IELTS. And in terms of a standard offer for a Colombian postgraduate student, you would be looking for the Leicendio um, or um, Diploma with a final result of around 3.5 to 3.8. Um, this would vary on the course that you're applying for, your university, the marking scheme. So everything would be taken into consideration when you apply. The admissions team will also be looking at subjects you've studied before. So when you do apply to us, it's very, very important that you um, include an up to date transcript from your university. Once you've applied to us, it takes around four to six weeks um, to get a decision back to you. Um, so it can be very we, we receive a large number of applications, especially in January, February time. So it can take up to six weeks for that decision to reach you. So do be patient. In terms of the course um, highlights, there's dedicated course uh, pages for each of our courses that you can find more information around sort of what each course offers, what the structure's like, um, case studies, you can see some information about students who've done the course before, what the entry requirements like, and then the application information and anything else you might need. So once you've, once you've sort of looked at our courses, do look at the course webpage in detail. This is where you'll find out more information about what the course includes. We do offer a pre-sessional programme. So Mainly, I think the pre-sessional programme, a lot of students think it's around sort of bringing their English level up. So if you're slightly below on your IELTS score or equivalent, um, you can do a five week or a 10 week course, depending on where you are. But also, I would say for our pre-sessional programme, this is also about sort of preparing you for your study in the UK um, a year for a postgraduate course is not a very long time um, and the pre-sessional course can give you a little bit more time to adapt to studying and learning within the UK and what we expect of you um, because it does vary from different educational systems and just getting used to that so yes it can absolutely help you improve your level of English so you're ready for the start of the course but I think there are other benefits as well to um to studying on a pre-sessional course. So scholarships and funding. Um, we have a number of scholarships available. Um, we have the Dean's Award for Academic Excellent and Global Leader Scholarship. These are worth £5,000 each, and those are for courses that are within the faculties. So Faculty of Engineering and Design, Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, and Faculty of Science. For the School of Management courses, they have awards from five to £10,000, um, and also the MBA has um, scholarships up to £15,000. There are set times for you to apply for your, for your scholarship, but what's really important is that you have an offer to study on a master's course before you can apply for a scholarship. So you must apply for the course before you can apply for the scholarship. So what I would say is, if you are thinking of applying for a scholarship, make sure you apply for your course in plenty of time. Remember, it takes four to six weeks to get a decision. And then once you have an offer, you can apply for the scholarship. We have a deadline that will be in around sort of February, March, and then May, and then July time as well. But it would be better to aim for the earlier deadlines for the scholarship so you have plenty of time to secure your scholarship before arriving in Bath. And also the work we do with Colfaturo, um, we offer a discount on tuition fees. So the postgraduate research programs, 25% um, discount, and then our postgraduate 
um, taught programs or our master's programs, including our MBA, it's a 15% discount. So again, you go through the normal process to apply for a course. And then once you have a offer from the university, you can apply um, for, the, for the loan um, through, through the, uh, to Colfortura directly, directly, and you would get the 15% discount. So what's really, really important at this time is that if you are interested in applying to the University of Bath, is that you apply for the course, first of all. So great news uh, for 20, for those of you looking for 2024 entry, applications are already open. They open on the 6th of September. So you can go ahead, you can go to our web pages, you can make an application. Everything's online. All the information about what you need um, is, is on there as well. So that's great news that you can go ahead and apply. One thing I did want to talk about today as well, which we really, really think is important at the university is around how we support you as a student and your student experience. So we have a range of services available on campus, including a medical and dental center. We have teams who are here to look after you. Um, we have a student services center. We have counseling and faith support. Um, we have teams who can advise you on immigration on disability if you're if you need support with money um so that's around welfare support and then looking at your sort of academic support we've got obviously within the department each course has a director of studies you will also be assigned a personal tutor now this is an academic member of staff um who who you can speak to if you do have anything that you need to approach them about but we also offer academic support with sort of language, with learning. Um, it may just be looking at sort of math skills. It may be looking at supporting your language skills. Um, we work with you on sort of team working, on project work. So, and there's also peer mentoring available. And then in terms of your careers, we talked a lot, I mentioned a lot about the support we give to our students and we're ranked very highly around career support. We have a dedicated career service. Um, we've got a global alumni network, but we've also got other associations. So the Postgraduate Association, the International Students Association to support you as students. So it's not about just the university staff supporting you, it's about peer support as well. Um, from other students at the university. So that's about what we can do. Um, the, un the university has a students union. Um, this is the body which represents you as students, and this is where you can go for help. They also advertise jobs for you, part-time jobs, volunteering opportunities. Um, they provide representation. So there are officers who represent you at university committees. There's also lots of clubs and societies that you can get involved with. Um, so anything from Harry Potter Society, you can have a salsa dancing film. It could be anything. And if you can't find the society or the interest you're looking for, then um, you can create one yourself. So you may have um, some an interest that you want to start, and I'm sure there would be other students on campus who would be willing to get involved. So there's always that opportunity. And then sports. So um, yes, we, we do pride ourselves on sports, but there's lots of different sports. You don't have to be at um, sort of athletic level you can be at any level there's lots of different sports to get involved with um, we have an amazing gym on campus which you have access to and then there's other areas like an olympic swimming pool um, and, and there's lots of different sports for you to get involved with um, on campus so i've been talking quite a lot today um, so just one last thing from me is that We've got a postgraduate virtual open day on the 8th of November. Um, so this is where you join online. There'll be lots more people for you to um, interact with. Um, we have some virtual sessions, uh, panel sessions, where we'll be updating you around fees and funding, applying, student life. We will have student ambassadors online 
And then there'll also be the opportunity to ask questions within your departments as well or any courses on entry requirements. So that's on the 8th of November. So if you are interested, do register. Um, if you do a search for the Postgraduate Virtual Open Day, the University of Bath, you'll be able to register for that. Um, and then just finally, um, I've, I've written there on the presentation, um, Vera Quinn, who is our student recruitment manager. Um, if you do have any questions, she is the regional manager um, for Latin America. And if you do have any questions, you can always contact her directly. and She will reply to you. I'm happy to take any questions that you may have today. Good. Well, uh, before that, thank you so much, Nadit, for all the information we give uh, you give us today. I'm going to check some questions that we have from social media. And the first one is about the cost of living in UK. So maybe can you give us like an estimated cost of living in UK? Absolutely, yes. And I think this is a hot topic. We know there's lots of information um, in the media at the moment about the cost of living. So as well as your tuition fees, we would factor around 15 to 16,000 pounds, and that's UK sterling pounds a year to um, live. So that would be for your accommodation, your local travel, your food, any sort of clothes, books, entertainment um, that you may may have. We, we know that support support is available on campus. Um, in terms of different ways of which you can make more of less. You know, we know food prices are increasing. Um, and so there's lots of different ways that we have within our student support service where, where you can get food um, at cheaper prices. We offer discounted food um, on breakfasts and lunches on campus, on cafes around the campus as well, on different days of the week. So the university is doing... Um, a lot to support our students at what's a difficult time so you can make the most of 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 your money and make it go further thank you the next question is about the language requirement and they want to know if you just accept the IELTS or maybe you accept the TOEFL the Duolingo the Cambridge exam yeah we do offer alternatives to the IELTS so IELTS is just one of the tests that we um accept we do off accept duolingo um, and tofu we do have a dedicated web page for that information um, so please do check that out we are accept sort of the there's a variety of different um bodies that we accept english language tests from um, but I, I i won't be able to say them all off the top of my head so i think it's better you go to the web pages and have a look but if you search for postgraduate um, English language entry requirements at the University of Bath, you should find the web page and it will be linked when you're looking at entry requirements on our course pages as well. Yes, thanks. Next question is about the PhD program and they want to know like how they can contact a supervisor for the PhD program. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. So in terms of applying to the university for a PhD, you can either, like you say, apply directly to a supervisor um, or you can get in touch with our doctoral college. Um, if you want to, if you have found the supervisor details online and you know who that is, you can approach them directly. Um, a lot of students aren't sure about doing that. So they do contact the admissions team in the doctoral college for some more guidance. Um, so that is available as, as an option as well. And if you go onto our web pages and search for admissions for doctoral college, you'll find their, their web um, email address and they will get back to you in terms of the approach. But if you do have the details of the supervisor, you, you absolutely can contact them directly. Yep. And the last question I have from social media is how difficult or how easy is to get a job once they finish their master's degree in UK? Yeah, we, we get this question a lot. I think um, um, it's it's not easy. The job market is competitive. Um, but what we can do at Bath is we provide you with the support that you need. And we have employers who come to us saying, we really want Bath graduates. So we prepare you 
to apply for those jobs. So giving you sort of preparing your CV, making an application, going to interviews, how do you act? If you're going into a certain industry and you need some knowledge on that industry as well, we have dedicated people who would be able to help in our career service who specialize, say, if you want to work in engineering or a science program, what would the employers be looking for? Um, so we absolutely support you. In um, May of each year, we do have like a virtual employability day um, where you can actually meet our career service and we talk about um, the kinds of jobs that our students have gone into. There's alumni online as well. You can also ask these questions at our virtual open day on the 8th of November. Our career service are online and they will be able to provide you with more information about the career support. Um, we have employers who come in and give presentations on careers in working in certain areas. So um, they will also advise you on what they are looking for as an employer before you make an application. And we also have a careers um, fair twice a year on campus. So one is in October. So if you arrive in September to start studying very soon after you arrive, we have employers on campus, which you can speak to. And then in May of the following year, where you can find out about what employers are looking for and speak to them directly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And just to finish the presentation, this is a call to your question. It uh, would be like, what can the candidate do to improve the chance of being admitted to the university? Um, yes, that's a good question. I think your personal statement is really important. So look at what the entry requirements are and really focus on sort of showing your skills that you have for that program. Um, so talk about why you want to come and study at Bath, why you want to do your chosen course and what you can offer. Um, talk about your skills, maybe talk about any voluntary work or any work experience you have, even talking about some teamwork, leadership skills, those soft skills that you might have that you can bring to the program, um, I think is really, really important. What we was really important for the admissions team at Bath is they look at the application as a whole. So whilst we have academic entry requirements and we look at that, we look at everything. We look at sort of what you've studied, where you've studied, but also about you as a person. What work have you done? What are your interests? Where do you want your career to be? Maybe talk a little bit about how this master's program will help you um, in your career, further career as well. So that will be all for today. Thank you again, Navdeep, for being here and for sharing all this useful information. Thanks everyone for being here as well. So I don't know if you wanna like say something before we finish the presentation. Uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. Really great to see you and really hope to that you can join our virtual open day to learn more um, about. I've only given a very small overview of what the university offers, but do join us then. Thank you. Thank you. So have a great day and thanks, everyone.